Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Next Gen. Drone bill would inflate drone prices by more than 50%. Pivotal gains access to USAF resources under OTA contract. And Gray Eagle engine passes muster with 2500 hour torture test. And I'm your host, Colin Lee. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Next Gen Program, a weekly news program covering the next generation of flight, from electric power to vertical lift, uncrewed vehicles, and everything in between. Let's get into today's stories. Drone Bill HR8416 would inflate drone prices by more than 50%. The drone industry has raised its hackles regarding the Drones for First Responders Act, introduced by Congressional Rep Elise Stefanik, describing it as a boon to the EMS, fire and police crowd at the expense of the recreational and commercial drone industries. Vic Moss of the Droning Company said, quote, While on the surface, this bill makes a lot of sense, and I believe the industry is on board with what the Congresswoman is trying to do for first responders, in addition to farmers and ranchers, as well as those who work with critical infrastructure, that's where our support ends." The bill would increase tariffs on Chinese drones by 5% per year, up to a full 50% after four years of effect, when the 50% would be joined by a full $100 tariff on top. After January 1, 2030, the bill would ban drones from import to the USA if they contain a host of hardware manufactured in China. The sugar coating on this poison pill for the little guy's drone market is that the greatly expanded tariffs would be used to set up a fund to issue grants to first responders. Of the fund, 60% would be granted to first responders, which could be realistically understood to, in all cynical likelihood, ramp up surveillance capacity for law enforcement. After the break, Starship set to launch Thursday. For over 30 years, the massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all new digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon, www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. Now for some shorter stories in our next gen minute. Will they beat Starliner? Starship set to launch Thursday. According to Elon Musk's troops, the fourth flight test of Starship could launch as soon as June 6th, pending regulatory approval. The launch window will open as early as 0700 Central. As is the case with all developmental testing, the schedule is dynamic and likely to change. SpaceX boasts that, quote, Starship's third flight test made tremendous strides towards a future of rapidly reliable, reusable rockets. The test completed several exciting firsts, including the first Starship re-entry from space, the first ever opening and closing of Starship's payload door in space, and a successful propellant transfer demonstration, end quote. It's a match. Nexus eVTOL demonstrator comes together. Textron has successfully connected the two halves of the fuselage of its electric vertical takeoff and landing Nexus full-scale technology demonstrator. This significant milestone involves joining the central sections of the aircraft that are designed to seat passengers. The fuselage assembly milestone supports the demonstrator's first flight expected next year. Merlin begins flight studies in KC-135. A lesser-known project from Merlin began some data collection flights with a KC-135 Stratotanker from McDill AFB, gathering info about crew workload, tasking, and use cases for their future Merlin pilot suite. They went on a pair of flights back-to-back, assessing tasks that pilots perform in the course of a normal tanker flight. The firm is reportedly assessing just where autonomy could actually make the most effective difference in improving safety, cost, and efficiency. 
Bell snags DARPA contract for preliminary design work on Sprint X-Plane. Bell has been given funding under Phase 1B of DARPA's Speed and Runway Independent Technologies, or SPRINT, X-Plane program. Bell will move on from Phase 1A, where it completed a conceptual design review, and will now move on to preliminary design efforts for the SPRINT X-Plane. SPRINT aims to, quote, design, build, and fly an X-Plane, end quote, aimed at a, quote, transformational combination of aircraft speed and runway independence for the next generation of air mobility platforms, end quote. That was our Next Gen Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Pivotal gains access to Air Force resources under OTA contract. Pivotal signed an Other Transaction Authority contract with the U.S. Air Force and its AFWorks Agility Prime program, providing them with access to testing facilities, segregated airspace, and expert resources for a two-year term. The firm sees the contract as a very solid step in the right direction, where they'll be able to make the best use of government testing facilities and space to keep up developmental pace on their Helix eVTOL. AFWorks is the force's little play service, allowing them to be nimble with funding projects that could ultimately transform fundamental aspects of Air Force operations. The difference, at least compared to so many contracts under a similar vein for DARPA, lay in the fact that AFWorks tends to invest in projects closer to release, where developers have real-world prototypes ready to go. Lt. Col. John Teckel, AFWorks Agility Prime Branch Chief, said, quote, Providing expertise, logistical support, and essential government test resources exemplifies Agility Prime's goal to collaborate with industry partners to support the advancement of the commercial eVTOL sector, which could provide new mission-relevant capabilities to our warfighters." End quote. After these messages, Great Eagle Engine passes muster with 2,500-hour torture test. Backcountry flying to us is our playground. For us, it's how we access the things we like to do. It's just our lifestyle. We exclusively use the, the Hartzell Voyager prop, and it's proved to be um, just a great combination for what we do. What it's doing, it's, it's helping us all have better performing airplanes. Man, it feels a lot better clearing trees by 50 feet versus 20 feet. I don't ever see myself not flying. Are you ready to ace your FAA drone pilot knowledge test, get your remote pilot certificate, and start earning money? Well, flying a drone is a great tool that can open up new business opportunities for anyone. Realtor, insurance adjuster, videographer, or commercial weekend drone warrior, you need to fly legally. Whether you're pursuing your initial Part 107 remote pilot certificate, or you need a renewal, King Schools has a course just for you. So start learning today at kingschools.com. Welcome back. Gray Eagle Engine passes muster with 2,500-hour torture test. General Atomics Aeronautical Systems, in many ways America's flagship combat UAV manufacturer, has finished up durability testing on a new 200-horsepower engine. The firm calls it the Heavy Fuel Engine 2.0, designed to provide 2,500 hours between overhauls and chug along for long flights with nary a complaint. The final durability test put their test unit through a ringer of 1,250 full-power takeoffs and climbs, along with 200 hours of cruise with a fallback generator set up to simulate a worst-case loading condition. At the end of it all, General Atomics gave it the nod, setting it up for the Army's upcoming multi-domain ops UAS. Now it only needs one more 150-hour test, and it can get the Army's final approval before moving down the production pipeline. The new power plant beats the older HFE by a rousing 20 horsepower, intended to be the beating heart of the Gray Eagle 25M. The HFE 2.0 project began in 2016, when General Atomics wanted to improve on the Thielert Centurion included on older Gray Eagles, while bringing a little more of its manufacture under American purview. 
And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.